Ach. All right, I, uh, I like to talk about last version of work energy theorem today, which is the fourth version. Uh, the differences between the, where are the differences uh, between the version? Because in every version of work energy theorem, we have energy on one side and certain work on the other side. The difference is always in the adjectives. Uh, so for example, uh, like, uh, uh, during the last uh, the, the last uh, uh, meet our last meeting, we had work work energy theorem, in which certain kinetic energy was related to certain uh, well certain kinetic energy of the object was related to certain work done on the object. Everything and kinetic energy had to be even. I mean, let me add that thing that it was in an inertial reference frame. It was measured in, uh, uh, compared in an inertial reference frame. So, in an inertial reference frame, certain kinetic energy of an object is related to certain work on the object. Tell me which uh, kinetic energy of the object in an inertial reference frame and which work on the object in the same reference frame. Very good. Uh, 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 work was done on the center of mass. Now, if we say work done on the center of mass, uh, it is not that we were pulling the center of mass. It is really, it is always how we calculate, not, uh, not how we perform it. You cannot pull anything uh, uh, holding a center of mass because it's an abstract point. All right, now how about which kinetic energy of the object? Consult with your neighbor. Ask, uh, check if your neighbor, so, so don't shout, check if your neighbor knows and discuss with your neighbor what kinetic energy is affected by the work done on the center of mass of an object. So, okay, why don't we, why don't we hear, what, what, did, what would you say, which kinetic energy? Translational kinetic energy, correct, it has to be translational kinetic energy. All right, this is, now, it's about the same system. So now I'm talking about identical object as before, for which translational kinetic energy is related to the work done on the center of mass. Uh, <coughs> If we calculate the total work done on the system, and by, by this we mean work done on each of the particles, so we take displacement of individual particles, and by all forces, internal and external, in other words, on each of the particles we calculate the network done by everything around it, around the particle, so it could be external forces or also internal forces in the, uh, in the object. Th the, this work, if we calculate this work, which actually uh, if you, uh, you can see, is it easy to calculate or not? Not that easy. Why? Because you have to, for each particle, you have to calculate work separately. There's a lot of work in doing that unless the object moves in a particular way. If an object moves in a particular way that, that uh, then you th then it's uh, it's easier so for example if I think about uh, if I move this object like that it's easy to find out 
that worked because all particles moved parallel, so they had all the same displacement. All right, so if we calculate that work, it is going to be equal to the change in the total kinetic energy of the system. Now, I want you to discuss with the, with the neighbor what's the difference between total kinetic energy of the system and translational kinetic energy of the system. Consult with your neighbor. What's the difference between total kinetic energy of an object and translational kinetic energy of the object? And as an example, I'll toss this yo-yo now. And tell me what is translational kinetic energy and total kinetic energy. Uh, just say positive, negative, or zero. Consult with each other. Which one was, which one was positive? Which, uh, which one was uh, negative? Which one was zero? And in this particular instant, whoops, not this one. <laughs> At this instant, <coughs> well, so let's start with which one do you want to start with? Translational, okay. Who votes that translational kinetic energy at this instant is positive? Who thinks that it's zero? Who thinks that it's negative? There was, there was not strong support for zero, uh, which is upsetting, but at least all of you who decided to vote, you said zero. Correct. Translational kinetic energy was zero, and the reason for it was because, because the center of mass did not move. All right. How about total kinetic energy? Who votes that it was positive? Who thinks that it was zero? Who thinks that it was negative? Kinetic energy can never be negative because each uh, uh, particle has kinetic energy which, is, which contains one half, which is a positive number, mass of a particle, or individual particle, which is a positive number, and square of speed. All three numbers are positive. So each particle in the object had positive kinetic energy. Therefore, definitely it cannot be negative. Now, how about zero? Uh, <coughs> well, actually, if you can find just a single particle, therefore, which has a positive kinetic energy, then the yo-yo has positive trans uh, total kinetic energy. Right, because when we calculate total kinetic energy, we are adding kinetic energies of all individual particles. <coughs> Can you find a particle which has a non-zero, uh, non-zero kinetic energy? Now that particle, I, for, for a particle, I don't say translational kinetic energy or total kinetic energy. For, par for particles, we have only kinetic energy. Is there a particle in the yo-yo that has a positive kinetic energy? Can you find it? Christina, can you? Positive, positive kinetic energy. In other words, is there a particle which has a non-zero speed? Yeah, there is a lot of them. Yeah, there is only, uh, uh, only particles which are on the axis of the yo-yo don't turn, right? So only those particles will have uh, zero kinetic energy. All other particles with will have positive kinetic energy. Therefore, if I calculate the total kinetic energy of the yo-yo, I will have a positive number. All right, now talking about the yo-yo, let's think which work uh, affected translational kinetic energy and which affected total kinetic energy. All right, think about how much, well, how much I will contribute to each of those. Okay, I'll do something like this. 
which kinetic energy I affected. I mean, it's not only me because Earth was doing, was helping. It is always that uh, uh, whenever object uh, moves, it does not move because of a particular interaction. It moves because of interaction with, with all objects. So we don't have just, I mean, we can have a situation when there is only one force exerted on the object, so that uh, that force uh, or that interaction affects indeed, well, determines the motion. But in most cases it is, it just contributes, it affects the motion. All right, so <coughs> have I affected, the, was I performing work, well, let's see, my work, work performed by me, and think about string as a part of the yo-yo. Uh, so did I perform work which affected translational kinetic energy of the yo-yo. Consult with each other. And actually, I want, uh, uh, when, we, when we come to the, when, when you are ready, we will we'll discuss if, it, if this work was positive, negative, or zero. Uh, so consult. We are talking about translational kinetic energy. Consult with your neighbor. Did I perform positive work, negative work, or zero? Mm. All right, so who thinks that I performed positive work affecting translational kinetic energy? Who thinks that I did not perform work at all? Who thinks that I performed negative work? All right, so I see uh, that it was one to one to one. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> well, I performed negative work which affected translational kinetic energy. Because consult with your neighbor which work I was supposed to include, which work done by me on the system. It was supposed to be work done on individual particles by me, or was it supposed to be work done on the center of mass? Center of mass, correct. Now, center of mass, Again, it isn't that I'm applying a force on center of mass, it is how I calculate the work. So I take my, wor my force, I mean force exerted by me, and I multiply it by the displacement of the center of mass. All right, so therefore, which way I was applying a force? Up, correct. Which way the center of mass moved? Down, right? Work done due to this interaction, therefore, is negative, negative because cosine of 180 is negative. You are getting good. And I, I, I mean, I know that I mean, we have uh, four versions of work energy theory, and by the end of the semester, we'll have eight versions of Newton's second law, and the differences in them are adjectives. Uh, and I, for some reason, you hate adjectives, and therefore it leads to the, to the confusion. If you accept adjectives. Really, it's simple. It's, uh, it's, it's really obvious. All right, now how about how I affected the total, uh, total kinetic energy of the yo-yo, I mean of that system? Who believes that I, oh, consult first. How I affected Total kinetic energy. How much work did I do on that system which affected its total kinetic energy, not translational kinetic energy. Translational kinetic energy, re I remind you that it is the sum of kinetic energies of all particles. Translational kinetic energy is only associated with the motion of center of mass. So, 
uh, and you can obviously not figure it out from uh, the type of translation of kinetic energy. That one doesn't really, from that you cannot itself conclude which work you have to take. You have to know which work to take in each of the work energy theorems. So for, tr for total kinetic energy, which work do I have to take? Yes, Christina? Not network? It's network, but, but how calculated? Uh, yeah, let's, let, uh, let's come back again to this one. When we uh, specify force and when we specify work, what do we have to care for? Yeah, so when we identify the force, in order to identify the force, we have to answer ourselves how many questions? Three, three questions. Yeah, so, so whenever you think about force, think about those three questions. What are they? On what the force is exerted? What's exerting the force? And what type of interaction? Correct. If you cannot answer on single of those questions, it means that you are making up a force. And so for example, let's say that you are trying to, trying to drink soda from a cup through a straw. And a typical, t typical error is that you pull it. Yeah, how? Uh, so, the, so, so there is some kind of tension force, right? Uh, uh, I mean, people sometimes refer to that as suction force. Uh, how that force is exerted? Identify this interaction. Is it a tension? I mean, through what are we pulling it? Through vacuum, right? We are using vacuum to pull something. Can you imagine pulling a crate using vacuum? It's what? If you have sufficiently strong vacuum, right? <laughs> yeah. You have to make a strong rope from vacuum. If you make a strong rope of vacuum, you will be able to pull. You cannot drink soda on the moon because soda is not pulled by you. There is no suction force. We cannot pull anything using vacuum. We need a, a, a rope, a chain, or a, a rod. Something like that, material object. A vacuum is not material. A vacuum itself also cannot pull anything because it's nothing. Right? Vacuum is nothing. It cannot pull anything. So, so uh, it is that the atmosphere outside actually pushes that soda into your mouth, not that you are pulling. Yeah, so, so if you cannot answer, if it, what type? Now, how about, can you give me an example of uh, something which we refer to force for which you cannot find the source of the force, the object which exerts the force? Centrifugal force, Centrifugal force correct. The one which is, which is exerted on the, on the uh, cup of coffee on the dashboard when you make a left turn. There is no object exert pushing that, 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 uh, that cup. Uh, all right, why did I make this digression? Aha, which kinetic energy, so which kinetic energy, uh, uh, no, sorry, which work affects the total kinetic energy? Work done by me. How much work did I perform to affect the total kinetic energy of the object? And actually you have a, you have that work energy theorem on the screen. How about actually if I go even further, the, w put the formula, although, although really the sentence is more important than the formula. So I have now to, according to this version of work energy theorem, I have to calculate work done by forces on the particles, on individual <coughs> particles. So where is the particle on which I exert the force? The, the string over here, right? How much work I did on that particle? Zero, because the particle didn't move. All right, now let's come back to this, how we identify work. Yep, for, for, for force, we had to answer three questions. For work, we had to answer how many questions? Five. Five. 
the same three as for fours. So, what are they? What exerts the force? I mean, what, in what performs the work this time, right? Uh, remember that it's, uh, it's uh, work is just an alternative description of the same thing, the interaction, right? So, what performs the work? On what the work was performed? So, what object exerts, uh, performs the work? On w what object the uh, uh, work is performed? The third one is due to what interaction? Now, there are two more. What point of the object, correct? So for translational kinetic energy, we take center of mass. For total kinetic energy, we take the points where the forces are applied, the particles where the forces are applied. All right? And the next one? Uh, not displacement, because displacement is insufficient. Uh, uh, yeah, it's cumulative. Displacements are only differential, yeah, because I mean, only all along the differential displacement we can be sure that, that the uh, uh, force does n is not affected. So, uh, yeah, because I don't want you to, to remember uh, the definition of work that it is f force times displacement, because it leads to, a, to uh, uh, misunderstandings and, and ca you calculate work uh, improperly. It is always integral of force and displacement, of product of force and displacement. All right, so uh, what is the last question? Indeed, it is somehow related with, with this, what you call the displacement, but now it, you have to be more specific because, for example, uh, the path, correct, because the work done by me on the ball, if I move it from here to here, that way, or that way is different, can be different. It happened, it happened that, that that one wasn't, but if I draw a line on the whiteboard, then they would be different. Um, I mean, I can do it different here as well, yeah, because if I move it from here to here this way, so I, the displacement is from here to here, and I will perform now different work than this one. That work this time, I also displace from this point to this point, and, and at this point I released it, but this time I performed different work than the first time, although displacements were identical. Uh, all right, well, I was thinking of now, uh, let's, oh, how about if I show you a simulation in which we look at this type of of work. So I have a system over here of two particles. So sure. Correct. Yeah. So with that yo yo, if we consider translational uh, total kinetic energy, I performed zero work because I was applying force over here and the particle on which I was applying the force did not move. So, I have not affected total kinetic energy of the yo, -yo. I affected, however, translational kinetic energy of the yo, -yo. Why? Because, I, because the center of mass moved, so the work done by me on the center of mass was uh, uh, not zero, actually it was negative. And, and, and can you actually see that, now think about uh, work done by Earth uh, in the, uh, for, for the translational motion. So for the translational motion, what would I have to, do, to take in order to evaluate uh, work done which affects translational kinetic energy of the yo-yo? So it will be weight of the yo-yo multiplied by the displacement of the center of mass. I mean, again, it's an integral, but because the force is constant, it happens to be equal force times the total displacement, the entire integral. So was it positive, negative, or zero? Positive, correct, yeah, because the displacement was down and the force was down, so the cosine of the angle between the two vectors was zero. Now. Let's say that I, that that yo-yo moves 
two different ways. L once like that, and the second times like that. Compare the work done by Earth in both cases. Who thinks that they were different? Who thinks that they were identical? Co uh, con convince your neighbor about your opinion. All right, so let me ask you again. Who believes that it was, uh, uh, what was my question? That, that they were different. <laughs> Who believes that they were different? Who believes that they were identical? Uh, more people believe that they were identical, and those of you who believes that they were, uh, believe that they were identical, you were right. Yes. Yeah, and I, I even know how you came to the conclusion that they were different. Because rather than looking at work, you are comparing kinetic, uh, translational kinetic energies, right? Because indeed, when I hold it, translational kinetic energy over here is less than if I just let it drop, right? However, you can see that when I drop, the yo-yo doesn't spin. When I hold it, it spins. Uh, we will learn later on that with the spinning we have something which is uh, called rotational kinetic energy and it happens that certain rotational kinetic energy and, tr and translational kinetic energy add up to the total kinetic energy. Well, anyway, but this is just a uh, subject which we will discuss in the future and comprehend in the future. But Look at the work, not at the com no, not, uh, en energies, because, I mean, the purpose of work energy theory is not to calculate work, but it is to figure out where the object is going to move, I mean, how the object is going to move, and if, an, if we want an object to move in particu particular way, how do we have to design interaction? Uh, kinetic, don't use kinetic energy as the definition of work. All right. So, in, in the first case, uh, we will take displacement of center of mass and total weight. Now, in, in one of the previous, uh, previous uh, uh, slides, we also figures out that the change of the total potential energy happens to be equal to the displacement of the center of mass uh, and the total weight. So from that, we, we could figure out that no matter how, oh, uh, how, how about actually if we imagine that that, that yo-yo moves in such a way that it performs a, a whole number of revolutions. So although individual particles uh, move along cyclos, let's like I consider four particles over here, and each of those particles will move along a certain cycloid. This was the path. This would be the path of each of the particles. But if I take a look at the at the displacements, they are identical. Do you see that? Yeah, so now if I calculate, <coughs> and each of those displacements is equal to the displacement of the center of mass. So no matter how we calculate, work is going, to, gravitational work is going to be the same for both 
for both kinetic, uh, kinetic energies. But you probably notice that translational kinetic energy is smaller when I hold it. How come? No, it's not because how the center of mass works. Which work actually prevented gaining this translational kinetic energy when I hold it, when I, when I kept, kept it, when I hold it here, compared to this when I released it? Work done by me, correct. If we consider translational kinetic energy, I was performing negative work, right? When I released it like that, how much work did I do? I was doing no work. I was zero, doing zero work, right? So in this case, all work, all gravitational work went into the energy, the kinetic energy which I'm cons considering. And in this case, I was performing negative work. And that one had to be uh, included. All right, let's take a look at the. Uh, uh, so let's I think that these are two particles, and they interact with each other now, and uh, can interact. And how about if I think that? Uh, well, here I mark uh, external force. So now I will make external forces to be uh, uh, zero. They don't. There is no work uh, done by external interactions. And uh, all right, I will. And here I'm making plots. Let's stop it. Uh, so here are measurements, actually, of kinetic energy of uh, one particle, kinetic energy of another particle, and total kinetic energy. Over here, I have uh, also plots of, of uh, work done by on one. Uh, now, uh, th this was for ex external work. Uh, external, uh, so that, uh, this is work done due to the uh, uh, green force uh, exerted on the green particle, work done by, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, blue particle and total kinetic energy and plot of the total kinetic energy of the system. And here at the same time, I'm comparing translational kinetic energy with the works. Uh, so this work is work done on the center of mass. Here I mark which work? It's work done on individual particles. Correct. All right. So now, is it obvious that translational kinetic energy is zero? These are particles which differ only in color. Masses are identical. So I mark their center of mass over here. And what is in the reference frame of that screen, what is the translational kinetic energy of the system? Zero. Uh, Amber, why? Anybody? Carl? Carl? Center of mass doesn't move, right? It is mass of the object multiplied by square of the speed of center of mass divided by 2. Uh, I'll show you now what will happen if I change the distance. Now, really, how do we change it? How two particles which interact can change distance? <laughs> well, let's say I have hands like that. How did I do that? How did I change my shape? I did what? How? I bent my arms. How do I bend my body? How I change my shape? And you, are, all of you are doing it that way. Think about how are you changing your shape? Muscles. What are they for? <laughs> to apply forces. Correct. You are applying forces inside. Your muscles exert forces. So in order to, pull, to, to, to bring my arms closer, I have to pull those. Uh, all right. <laughs> now, 
uh, do these two particles, I mean, if they are connected by this, uh, I mean, by some kind, I mean, can they, how do they actually rotate as a system like that? How they maintain their shape? Uh, how? Well, what does it mean rigid? The, the tension, let's say, that in that string, correct, they have to pull each other. Otherwise, otherwise where's the other ball? <coughs> Let me try those balls to, 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 to make, to move like that. Uh, something went wrong. Why they didn't r rotate like that? <coughs> Maybe I should. They didn't. <coughs> Why they didn't want to, to move like that? What say? Well, you cannot exert tension on the center of mass. Center of mass is not an object. They are not interacting. They would have to pull each other. In order to, to move like that, they would have to pull each other. Moon and, 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 uh, and Earth is moving like that. Why? Where is the string? The gravity makes the string. Correct. Uh, all right. Now, as they move that way, figure out how much work they perform on each other. Now let me move just a little bit. How much work did they do on each other? Who said zero? Why? Yes, zero is correct answer. And no, it's not because they are pulling in opposite directions. It's not, oh, because uh, uh, this is better, that the distance between them doesn't change. Uh, how about directly from the definition of work? Look at the green particle. Which way the blue particle exerts the force on the green particle? It's, it is pulling, right? So the force is in this direction. Now, what was the displacement over here? What was the angle between the displacement, differential displacement and the force? 90 degrees, correct? So like right now, Force is going to be in this direction. Displacement is going to be in this direction. Over here, there will be 90 degrees angle. If there is 90 degrees angle, what is the work done between the force and the displa differential displacement? Then the differential work is going to be zero. Why? Cosine. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Correct. So the blue particle performs zero work on the uh, green particle, and the green particle performs zero work on the blue particle. Uh, uh, so which, uh, which uh, kinetic energy sh uh, uh, should not change? Uh, who believes that it's translational kinetic energy because of that work? Who believes that it's total? Have a belief, guys. Talk to each other. All right, so actually, whenever you have internal work, then it, is, it affects total. Internal work does never affect translational motion. Internal interactions never affect translational motion. Only, in, only external interactions affect translational motion. So total kinetic energy is not going to change because work done on individual particles is, uh, uh, is uh, zero. Uh, now, 
external work happened to be zero as well because I did not turn a, a single a force over here. So, uh, uh, so translational kinetic energy doesn't change uh, uh, also. However, now I'm going to change the distance between the, I mean, I will ask the system to change the, uh, the distance, which means that I will ask the system to apply a forces and on top of it, I mean, adjust the forces so that, they, so that the two objects don't just move in circles, but they will get closer. Actually, you notice that each of those particles started to move faster, right? I mean, this is simulation, so in principle, in the simulation, I could do whatever I wanted. Uh, however, this is a reality as well. We will discuss it sometimes in the future. When we bring those objects closer, then, uh, then the uh, uh, total, ki total kinetic energy increased. Now that total kinetic energy increased, translational kinetic energy was still zero. Now, how did it happen, actually, that total kinetic energy increased? Well, because now, in order to bring it closer, this particle had to move along a spiral like that, and this had to move along a spiral like this, right? Consider now displacement from here to here. So this was displacement. What was the direction of the force? Toward the other particle. Look at this angle. What happened with the angle? It became less than 90 degrees. Cosine of an angle less than 90 degrees is positive, negative, or zero? Positive. Therefore, work performed by the green particle on blue particle was positive. And the same way I can consider it over here. Uh, the other particle also performed positive on the work on the, on the first one. So internal work now was positive. If that internal work was positive, if uh, it affected which kinetic energy? Total. Total kinetic energy. And it didn't affect which kinetic energy? Translational, Translational kinetic energy. Correct. Now, how about if I... Now let's reset that. And this time I will uh, turn on one of the forces. Oh, no. How about if I, if I make it this way now? I'm applying now for, I'm squeezing this object. So I'm applying forces in opposite directions. Like that. And let's analyze which work affected what. Yeah, so now how about, how much work was uh, done by the system internally? Zero, correct. They didn't change the distance. They didn't change the shape. Only when shape changes, work, internal work is done. So uh, now we have only external work. Let's figure out how these two affected translational kinetic energy of the system. Consult with each other and come to the conclusion how translational kinetic energy was affected. Now that these two forces are opposite. Well, so who believes that um, work affecting translational kinetic energy was positive? Who believes that it was zero? Uh, who believes that it was negative? Good. It was zero. Why it was zero? All right. No matter if the object moved or not, the two forces... Uh, were in opposite direction, so the 
net work on the center of mass was zero. We had to consider displacement of the center of mass when we calculate each work. How about total kinetic energy? Who believes that work done uh, on that system which affected total kinetic energy was positive? Who believes that it was zero? How about negative? You got it. It was negative, indeed. Now, and actually, can you see it, right? The green particle was moving this way, while the force was applied in the direction opposite. I mean, it was not exactly opposite, but at an angle uh, greater than 90 degrees. Cosine of that angle was always negative. So work done by the green force on the green particle was negative. Work done by the blue force on the blue particle was negative. The total work was negative. So, that, so what happened with the total kinetic energy? Decreased. It decreased, correct. Because negative work means negative change in the total kinetic energy. Do you see the translational kinetic energy didn't change? Total kinetic energy did change. Total kinetic energy decreased. Uh, let me run it further. How about now? And work done. I mean, uh, work done by uh, uh, all interactions on individual particles with positive, negative, for zero. Positive, correct. The displacement and the force now make an angle less than uh, 90 degrees, right? This particle, for example, right now is going to move in this direction and the force is in this direction. So that angle over here is less than 90 degrees. All right, we could actually now think about how about looking at this. <coughs> now, did the translational kinetic energy change now? Yes. Why? Because now the center of mass started to move. All right. So this will be all for, for today. I think that tomorrow I'm still going to do exercises uh, so that we distinguish the versions of, please, before tomorrow, review all versions of Newton's second law and all versions of work energy theorem. Because I want now to solve some few problems, I mean one problem, with those various approaches to analyze those the, the differences in those uh, theorems. Thank you uh, very much and see you uh, tomorrow. Okay.